Hey, what's up guys? Graylin Stewart here with another video. This is my Work Wednesdays vlog series. Uh, so thank you for joining me. I appreciate it greatly. So if you're new to my channel, I am a virtual wholesaler and just a real estate investor in general. Um, we do wholesaling deals nationwide. We do buy and holds and fix and flips in Oklahoma. Um, and I live in Colorado and my entire team is virtual. Every deal we do is virtual. So we are completely virtual in every sense of the word. So anyways, today on my agenda, so I finally got my podio changes are done, at least the first round. Um, obviously, um, there's probably going to be some tweaks here and there, but I made a lot of changes, you know, because we just came back to podio a month or so ago. Uh, I, I mean, we never really left, but... We came back to fully embrace it and, and stop trying to go the other route. So anyways, I made a few changes, uh, which is better. I'll tell you a little bit about some of them. You know, before we had like we had a notes section to where you would pretty much put everything about the property just in the notes section. And we had a couple of other um, options, you know, besides the notes to where it would show you the beds and bath. You know, automatically that stuff would pull in from Zillow. Um, and we had, you know, did it need full renovation, you know, what type of renovation, um, square footage, uh, an offer range. We always do an offer range that automatically generated from based on the Zestimate, you know, which isn't always perfect, but it gives us a ballpark. Um, so it always gave us an offer range of our low and our high. So we still have that. But what I changed, um, I think is important. I'm just trying to, my goal is to, to try to make my acquisition managers, um, better at getting the deals deeper and the way I do that the way my plan is for them to know exactly what it takes to remodel a house okay so now I've done a bunch of flips at this point and a bunch of rentals at this point so both of those scenarios you remodel the property okay so I've remodeled you know dozens of properties at this point um, but it's important um, for them to know exactly you know, because before it was kind of a guesstimate, and it still will be, but it'll be a little bit more intentional, I guess. Um, not just, yes, the kitchen was updated, you know, within five years or whatever. And, and you know, they might have some specific notes in there, but now each thing has an actual question. So not only is it how many bedrooms and bathrooms, but, um, you know, when was the bathroom updated last? Never. Less than five years ago, five to 10 years, 10 to 15 years, 15 plus years. And then there's bathroom notes. Like what specific notes do you have on the bathroom itself? Same thing with kitchen. And then the windows. Like this is a question we've never, we never have asked. Um, we kind of assume an older house is gonna have older windows, so we probably gotta replace it. But we never really account for it when we're doing our offer and talking about it, you know. Is it vinyl windows, wood windows, aluminum windows? Those tell the story. So obviously vinyl is a newer window, so that's what we want. If it's vinyl windows, we know that most likely those will have to be replaced. But if it's wood or aluminum, you know, wood is really old. It could have termites, you know, it's, it's just old school. Aluminum is, you know, what they used back in the 70s and 80s and that kind of thing. So if we know those things and they're not energy efficient. So anyway, all these different questions that we have actually on here now, my acquisition managers can kind of just go down and just get those detailed questions answered because it's important to know that if the furnace or the AC works, you know, what about it? How old is it? Or is it just window units for AC? Or is it actual central heat and air? If it is central heat and air, is it less than five years old, five to 10 years old? You know, all those kind of things. So that's what we're working through, which we've already got all this in my podio now. Um, because they did the update over the weekend when people weren't working. Uh, and now I'm just kind of going through and just tweaking little things, adding little things, taking away some things. But that's not the only thing that we did. Obviously, I told you all in, in a recent video that we added more workspaces. So uh, I'll be going through each one of those to just kind of see what tweaks we need in those. Uh, we added a dialer into our Podio. Um, we added, of course, I already had to click the click button to send a contract but now we have other types of contracts and we're doing other types of deals 
besides just cash offers, which are different types of contracts. So I added those contracts in here as well. Um, so right now I'm just kind of going through, you know, the different workspaces, the different areas that we made changes just to see for one, if the changes got done, uh, for two, what tweaks I might need because I might need to add or take away some of those things after seeing them because at first this was all just a vision in my head and written down on a tablet or typed in a computer uh, and now it's actually here so I can actually make a better judgment and um, see how it really lays out. Um, but also those other workspaces that I told you all about before. So I added a rental workspace, a financial workspace, and an inventory workspace. So those are gonna help me because right now I track all of my rentals and my inventory on spreadsheets, <clears throat> which work fine, but it would be nice to have everything into one system. So I'm working towards that. Uh, so I haven't really gotten into those yet. And then the financial part will be nice too uh, because right now, obviously I have a bookkeeper, uh, that's a VA by the way, um, a bookkeeper that actually inputs everything into my QuickBooks, okay? But I had a meeting with my accountant when I was in Oklahoma a couple weeks ago, and she suggested that I open a couple of different LLCs potentially because we do so many things now. Um, you know, I've got my marketing company, I've got my wholesaling business, my fix and flip business, my rentals, rental slash rent to own business, um, you know, and then what else do I got? That's really it. I mean, I've got little little other little things that can kind of be lumped in with some of those, but um, those are kind of the four main ones. Um, so anyways, the financial, the financial deal is gonna help me because, you know, right now, when my bookkeeper is going through my bank statements or, uh, you know, anything else uh, from my spreadsheets, you know, he, there's sometimes he doesn't really know where to put certain things because really on my spreadsheets, all that I'm tracking is my inventory and my rentals, okay? Everything that I spend on those coming in or out. And, you know, some of the other things that we spend, you know, is kind of obvious, like some of the softwares that we have. He has a category for that, and he knows that that just goes to the wholesaling business because that's what we use most of our tools that we have in our business is for the wholesaling business. Um, you know, things like skip tracing, um, you know, all the different all the different things that we use, it's kind of a given. And then maybe uh, the gas that we spend, you know, insurance on cars or whatever, some of those that are, that are coming out, it's a given, right? He knows where to put them is my point. But not everything, like for example, if I, um, if I put $2,000 into my ROAR account, which is the, what I use, what we use for our automatic um, text and RVM blasts, um, sure, it's gonna show 2,000 and he knows that's marketing, but I'm trying to get, you know, even more detailed, you know, just so we can be better at KPIs is one of the reasons I'm doing it. So in the financial, you know, I'll have my bookkeeper actually keep up with that. So he'll have access to the financial workspace and also my master workspace to where we set up these campaigns. Um, just so we can detail that out more. So yes, $2,000 towards RVM and texting, but we may not necessarily spend the entire amount for that month, or maybe we'll spend more than that amount for the month. Um, but I want it detailed out to where this amount was for RVMs, this amount was for SMS. So we might've only spent, you know, 400 for RVMs, for example, and maybe uh, maybe 500 for SMS, and maybe we didn't spend 100 of it or, or 1100 of it. You know what I mean? So I wanna, I wanna account for that. So anyways, rambling on, I guess, but that was the point of me having financial, just so we know more granular exactly where all the money's being spent. So, you know, for KPI reasons, we can actually just look at a glance, like, okay, we did one deal for SMS and we spent X amount of dollars. Before, you know, it took a little time. You'd have to kind of look into it a little deeper and figure it out, which, which we do. That's how we track things, but this is just kind of taking a bunch of steps out is the goal to where we don't have to look at a bunch of different places and pull different spreadsheets and all those different things. The goal is to keep this simple. And that's the thing too, when, when you're starting out, you don't need any of this stuff, to be honest. Um, you definitely just wanna 
have a good idea of what you're doing um, and that you grow into softwares and systems and processes, all that stuff. But initially, when you're starting out, uh, you don't really need that. But, you know, I'm just to the point, you know, it's been over three years now. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to scale and it just becomes easier to scale as you make things easier uh, with your softwares and your systems and your processes and all that kind of stuff. Because um, then at that point, uh, if everything has its own system and process, then everything just works a little bit easier, if that makes sense. Um, so that's my goal. You know, it'll be easier to scale even bigger once all these things are in place, I feel. You know, because right now, just being totally honest, like my fix and flip stuff, I mean, it's totally inefficient the way that I do it because, yes, I did hire a full-time contractor recently, but still, um, it's me kind of managing him and and deciding what we're doing in the house and what we're spending, you know, all these things. I want to get it to where when we get a deal and he knows it's a rental, he knows exactly what to do without even talking to me or asking me, and he'll know when it starts based on the Podio updates because inventory is where that will be that's one of our inventory items right uh if it's a fix and flip if it's a rental it'll be in there and i I think the way that my developer worked it out is rentals and fix and flips will all be in inventory but once a fix and flip is done then it moves over into the rental category into the rental workspace because then at that point it's just a rental that we're keeping track of the tenant and all that stuff so what i'm trying to say is it'll make it nice to where my contractor you know He's my full-time guy where he can manage this himself. All he has to do is log into the um, inventory workspace every morning, see where he's at on projects. He can make notes without me asking for updates. You know, we flip virtually, so I'm in Colorado. We only flip houses in Oklahoma, so that's where he lives. Um, But instead of me asking for updated pictures every day or let me know what you did, it'll be his responsibility to go into the inventory workspace, fill all that out, Put in there exactly what he did for the day, upload any pictures that he had for the day for that actual project, and then um, where we're at on it, you know, how much further we got to go. And then at the same token, at the beginning of the whole process, my um, my transaction coordinator, part of her job could be um, turning on the utilities. You know, it's all these little tiny steps that, as far as whenever I close on a property, it's just me doing those. You know, I need to take those off my plate. Because, you know, you can't do everything as as an owner. You, you have to start letting go of things. So that's what I'm trying to build these out for. Uh, and then, you know, it's it's a process, you know. It's a, it's a journey. So I've got to build all these processes out for each individual workspace so that people know what to do when, when we have whatever's going on. Um, you know, because my goal... You know, and I did hire, you know, my, my new acquisition manager, which is, she's been awesome. And it's been great because my other acquisition manager is on her honeymoon. Um, and she learned fast. She got a verbal deal over the phone last week. Um, the guy had some issues come up to where he had to be out in the field. He, he works in the oil field. So he was out for several days, uh, you know, right after we got the verbal, evidently. Um, so hopefully she'll get that contract signed this week. But anyway, she's doing really good, learning fast. Um, you know, so eventually, you know, I, I actually brought her on to eventually be my COO, which, uh, you know, will she'll end up running the company one day. That was the whole intention because um, that's really what I brought her in for. But she's got to start somewhere, right? She's got to start with acquisitions and then slowly just start learning the different things that we do in our business. And... Uh, You know, when you start scaling, you know, most successful businesses at a really high level, at least, that I've seen and that I know of, um, you know, there's always like a visionary uh, and then there's an integrator, you know, and I'm pretty good at both of those, to be honest, but I'm more of a visionary. You know, I can see exactly what we need to do, where we need to go, um, but but then the integrator is the one that kind of makes those visions happen so I'm pretty good at those too but I'm definitely not as strong as implementing and doing the systems and the processes and and just making all that work you know and I feel that you know that she'll be really really good at that you know because we we knew each other in 
in the past we worked together and um, she was like that before so anyway it's a perfect understanding to where hopefully for a year or so she'll work through the different positions to where she can learn it all um, and then you know she's already given me ideas of how we can do things better which is awesome because it's you know that's exactly what I was hoping she's everything I hoped and more um, so that's really cool but anyways not trying to ramble on forever but today I'm working on refining all the changes in my podio obviously um, another side note we, we did uh, get an offer on a hotel that I actually closed on last week the offer is not great would we make money on it if I accepted it yes but uh, not enough so not happy with it so we're gonna I'm just gonna tell that's a thing too so my dispo manager typically on these MLS deals she'll send them to me when we get offers um, which is cool you know and I haven't told it to do any different but my goal is to for them to be self-sufficient like I don't even know about I don't even want to know about necessarily that we even got an offer I just want her to handle it you know what we have all in on this property you know what we typically want to make on wholesale deals but obviously when we hotel we usually want to make a little bit more um, in most cases but some cases like this deal uh, I knew it would kind of be tight uh, as a hotel but we still want to make a certain amount on that property and she knows that amount so why even send it to me you know so we're trying to I, I gotta work through those things to where she can be completely self-sufficient do the counter offer on her own without even asking me um, you know that's so that's kind of the goal because right now you know I still give my input and that's part of my fault because I like control you know um, but that's not scalable whenever you have to control everything uh, so that I'm working on that you know and that's what this channel is all about man I'm not I don't just tell everybody all the good uh, I mean I tell you the things that I'm working on I'm struggling with that we're doing terrible at you know my like I said my fix and flip um, is super efficient inefficient right now but so we're working on that even my rentals I'm the one that typically uh, sifts through all the people that apply and all that kind of stuff and that is definitely not the best use of my time you know um, I need to be focused on growing the company figuring out what our next steps are you know as an overall visionary of the company where we're going and um, and that kind of stuff and and even the marketing you know that doesn't take a ton of time at this point um, but even that I could probably you know farm out but um, eventually my COO I'll just have her do that too but you know that's that's a year plus out still which we're we're grooming her to do that eventually but anyways hopefully you got some value out of this I do feel that it's important once you start doing a couple of deals a month at least get you a podio or something like that um, so maybe this tip will help you I think it's it's probably better you know and I didn't come up with everything on my own and you know I have different friends that do it this way so it seems to work more efficiently um, so that's what I'm trying to do but I, I don't have I don't know of anyone act that actually has a financial um, and inventory stuff into their podio and the reason I wanted the inventory and I'll end this video soon but the reason I wanted the inventory was because we need every transaction accounted for right so when we got a wholesale deal and my acquisition managers clicked that they got the deal it automatically sent it to transactions and dispositions workspace so both of those workspaces knew about the deal right so let's say we closed on the deal didn't want to wholesale it but we actually closed on it so then um, depending on how we do it if I wholesale it to one of my other companies then I can pay a wholesaling fee okay and that's normal but then it's out or I might decide well let's hotel this I want the acquisitions to take part in the wholesale the hotel fee so we'll close on it so it's a zero dollar right we don't make anything on the property at that point but that's a transaction we closed so then it's got to go somewhere and it didn't have anywhere to go before it needed to go to something like inventory so now it's an inventory sitting until we finish the remodel or just until the hotel is closed once it closes we can push it back from inventory after we click closed um, and then it goes back to transactions so it shows another transaction because technically that's two transactions we have to account for that why 
for one, the first time we made nothing on it, so nobody really got paid. My transaction coordinator got paid, um, but the second one is really where people made the money, but we can't blend those into one transaction because that was two separate transactions that typically happened a month or more apart. Um, so that's why I added inventory, just so we can have that. And then the rental is a given, just so we can track those in Podio rather than and putting them in spreadsheets all the time. So anyways, hopefully you guys got value. Please give me a thumbs up if you haven't already. I'd appreciate it if you subscribe. Uh, I love I love doing this. I love adding value. Um, if you got any ideas of videos that you want me to do, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, if you got any comments, I always reply to the comments myself and I always will. So shoot me a message if you want to. Find me on all the social media pro, uh, you know, platforms out there, at Grayland Stewart. Uh, anyways, Hopefully you got value. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.